My name is Risa. I'm a retired psychotherapist, a mother, and a grandmother. I am here to tell you about my experience with polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS, and its link to my cardiovascular disease. I started menarche very late and had my first menstrual bleed at the age of 16. Even after that first cycle, my periods were very irregular, occurring only once every eight or nine months. After recording my basal temperature for months and undergoing diagnostic tests, it was determined that I was not ovulating and I was diagnosed as having PCOS. When I was ready to start my family in my early 30s, I found myself unable to conceive. I was tested for fertility issues and my diagnosis of PCOS was confirmed. I received hormonal treatments, but they were unsuccessful in producing any viable eggs and were temporarily discontinued. When I was about to restart the next cycle of treatments, I discovered I was pregnant. My daughter is now 34 years old and her sister, who was conceived without any medical intervention, is 32. In my mid-40s, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and I've been uh, taking medication to control both of those conditions uh, ever since. So in 2018, at the age of 61, when I felt a sharp pain in my upper right chest area, I thought for sure I was experiencing angina, just as my mother had at the age of 51. An urgent angiogram discovered a small dissection in my left anterior descending artery, which then spread to all three of the left-sided arteries, resulting in a major heart attack, cardiac arrest, cardiogenic shock, and about five hours of life-saving measures. The diagnosis was spontaneous coronary artery dissection, or SCAD. Although little research is available on the causes of SCAD, None of the suspected risk factors identified so far apply to me, except for my history of PCOS and the infertility treatments that I received as a young woman. There is widespread recognition, however, by scientists and cardiologists alike, that a lack of knowledge has created huge gaps when it comes to diagnosing, treating, rehabilitating, and supporting women with heart disease generally and SCAD specifically. Learning this motivated me to do lots of research on my own. Uh, on my own cardiovascular disease. And I've also been volunteering as a patient advocate and patient advisor with many local, national, and international organizations. In addition, I've also volunteered as a subject in several research projects to help bridge the gaps that are breaching women's heart health knowledge. What I think has been integral to my recovery after, over the almost four years since my SCAD has been my attitude of gratitude, my quest for knowledge, my self-advocacy work, and my volunteer work, which has added so much to the meaning of my life. Hello, everyone. My name is Mo Alcala, a cardiovascular research scientist at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. In support of the Way Red Canada campaign and the Canadian Women's Heart Health Alliance, here with us today is Dr. Jamie Benham. Dr. Benham is an assistant professor and an endocrinologist at the Department of Medicine Communi and Community Health Sciences at the University of Calgary Cummings School of Medicine. An expert in polycystic ovary syndrome, today we have the pleasure of briefly talking to her about the female-specific information and challenges faced in dealing with this syndrome and its effects on heart health. Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Benham. I'm happy to be here. Can we start with you providing us with an overview of what polycystic ovary syndrome is and how it relates to cardiovascular disease in women. Certainly, so polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS is the most common endocrine or hormonal disorder that affects females. It affects approximately 20% or one in five women. And symptoms that women can have include irregular menstrual periods, uh, evidence of high testosterone levels, which can be hair growth, hair loss, or acne, and they may have evidence of polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. Women with PCOS have an increased risk of cardiometabolic risk factors like high blood pressure, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and so it's important that we get screening for these as this can lead to an increased risk of heart disease. Thank you. What are some of the known causes or risk factors associated with this syndrome? 
So we don't know very much about polycystic ovary syndrome at this time. And a lot of research is being done in the area to get a better understanding. But we do know that PCOS tends to run in families. So mothers and daughters and sisters tend to have the condition. Thank you. What information can you share with regards to steps that should be taken to face the specific challenges of polycystic ovary syndrome and heart health? The first step is getting a diagnosis. Um, So if you have any of the symptoms, it's important to get screened for PCOS. And for women who have PCOS, it's important to get screened every year for those cardiovascular risk factors. So checking in with your doctor to get your blood pressure checked, to screen for diabetes, and to have a look at your cholesterol levels. Much appreciated, Dr. Benham. Finally today, could you share some advice with the audience in support of the messages of Wear Ed Canada to raise awareness around women's heart health and well-being? Certainly. So PCOS is a common condition and it is associated with an increased risk of heart disease and cardiovascular disease risk factors. So if you have any of the symptoms, irregular menstrual periods or a history of excess hair growth or acne, it's a good idea to check in with your doctor to see if you have a diagnosis of PCOS. And for those individuals who have PCOS, it's important to check in every year to get screened for cardiovascular disease risk factors so they can be identified early and treated to prevent heart disease. Thank you, Dr. Benham, for the valuable information you shared with us today. For more details and additional resources we have available, please visit wearredcanada.ca. And to conclude, we want you to be mindful, curious, and proactive in the management of your heart health and wellness. Because to take care of others, you need to first take care of yourself. Stay safe and heart healthy.